Welcome to today's press conference for Ole Miss Rebels head coach Yolette McPhee McEwen. Ole Miss's sports information director is Madeline Marshall. We'll now take questions for Coach McPhee McEwen. As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation at the beginning of each question. If you're on the Zoom call and have a question, please use the raise hand function, and I will call on you if we have time for your questions. Hi, Yolette. Janie McCauley from the Associated Press. Welcome uh, to the sunny Bay Area. You missed some uh, what we call atmospheric rivers here recently. So uh, your, your, two of your players were just up here and spoke about how everything with this group starts with defense and experience and leadership gained over the, over the past year. Um, how has that kind of that progression been and they're they're excited as a top defensive team to to face a top three-point shooting team Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow yeah I mean I just think the experience um, that we well before I say that I my heart goes out to uh, the Californians that were affected by the windstorm and uh, I, I was watching the news last night and saw some of the details and um, definitely put a prayer up for them. Uh, as far as our team's concerned, we, you know, we've, we think our schedule has prepared us for any type of matchup, from playing the number one team in the country in South Carolina uh, to a two seed in Utah. You know, we, uh, that average at the time, 100 points a game. Uh, so I think that our, our group has been battle tested. Uh, we've had to get on flights. We've played in the Bahamas, thanks to our administration, and spent a long time there. And and uh, with the hopes that it would prepare us for a, a moment like this. <clears throat> there you go, Ben Parker, CardinalSportsReport.com. Uh, just want to get your—you you kind of touched on a little bit, but just what are your overall thoughts on? on Gonzaga, your matchup with them, and just mm-hmm. what you see from them, and what kind of a test and challenge is that going to be for your team? I think Gonzaga is just an historic program. Um, Lisa and I were assistant coaches in the WCC uh, way back when, when Kelly Graves was the head coach and and Jim Solis was the head coach at Portland. So I was at Portland, and she was at Gonzaga. And so as soon as the matchup um, got announced, I shot her a text and I said, you know, just super proud of you and and what you all have done. So I think that first and foremost, there's an incredible amount of respect that we have uh, for Gonzaga and what what they've accomplished. You know, they beat uh, Tennessee this year and also Louisville. So um, we feel like it's gonna be an incredible matchup as far as styles are concerned, they're contrasting. Um, I don't know how much they have. I mean, I think both of us have had opportunities to play against contrasting styles. Them going up against Tennessee and, and Louisville and us going up against Oklahoma and Utah. So uh, it should be a really good matchup. Alex Simon from Bay Area News Group. S- since you've arrived in Oxford, how much have you kind of felt the program change and maybe even the support that you've gotten from the institution kind of grow in your time? Yeah, I mean, you know, just coming to Oxford, the reason why I felt like I could be successful at Ole Miss was because that wasn't my first build. I was able to build at Jacksonville University, so I kind of had like a rhythm of what it would take to build a program, And and in order to do that, you have to obviously engage the community, you have to bring in talent that fits the university and the style of play that you want to coach. And then obviously you have to win. <laughs> so uh, we've been able to do those things and our you know, support has grown uh, organically because of that. And i um, really excited uh, to where we are and uh, where we're, we're about to go. I'll tell you a quick story. When Kelly Graves was at Gonzaga, he would talk about his first couple of years, they would never promote the program because they weren't any good. <laughs> and, and then um, once they start being good, then they started promoting the program. I kind of took that uh, same kind of path. Uh, at first, I, I thought it was important to make sure that we had a product that people would want to come out and support. 
uh, three years in a row now we've been in postseason play and and so I think the proof is in the pudding we we uh, we've had good crowds this year uh, some record-breaking ones so we just uh, and, and we're just getting started you know I'm young in this only five years at Ole Miss so um, excited about the future we'll go to zoom for this next question uh, Jared you can ask your question Hey, Coach, uh, Jared Redding inside the Rebels on 24-7 Sports. Um, you were talking a couple days ago uh, after this election just about this being a business trip, and when mm -hmm. Angel was up here a second ago, it was asked about Gonzaga's three-point shooting, and she said, you know, we're simply focused on us. How proud of you or how proud have you been over the past couple of days of this team kind of handling themselves leading up to this game? Well, um, this is definitely a business trip for us. The last time we came out west in the Bay Area, we went to Cal, and we we had a blast. We went to NBA games. We uh, we toured the area. Uh, we hadn't left the hotel, so our girls are just excited to get out the hotel uh, because we're focused on treating this as such as an opportunity for us to do something that we hadn't done here with me at the helm, and that's try to put ourselves in a position to win uh, a first uh, game. So. Uh, I'm proud of our team. They've been incredibly focused. Um, in the non-conference, we usually use time, Jared, to just um, have a great experience. It's something that we promise our players that they're going to have a great experience, and we fill them up with a lot of that in the non-conference. But ever since we got in conference play, you know, we, we don't do much. We kind of just uh, eat. They eat a lot. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and sleep a lot, and we just watch a lot of film, and that's what we're going to continue to do. Uh, one one question for up here. Um, it's an interesting matchup between you and Gonzaga. Uh, you play a tough SEC schedule, number one overall seed twice. You know they have played a WCC schedule and. and have only lost twice since December. So they're kind of on a run, winning a lot of games. Your team tested a lot. What do you think are some advantages and disadvantages of that? Well, anytime you play an 8-9 game, I think the committee does a good job of making it uh, interesting. But at the same time, like you really don't know who can win. Obviously, I feel like if Gonzaga is able to impose their will, that can be problematic for us. Um, conversely, I think if we impose our will, that can be problematic for Gonzaga. So um, I expect both of us to come out and compete and, and try to win this game. I think it'll come down to whoever executes their game plan the best. Um, them being uh, uh, an offensive team. We've played high-powered offensive team, like, like I said, the Utahs, the Oklahomas. When we played those girls, they were averaging 195 points a game, and we held them in the 60s. Uh, so our team will be up for the challenge as far as Gonzaga is concerned. Uh, but winning makes you feel a certain way, you know, and they're going to have an incredible amount of confidence. And so will we. We're, we were 11-5. and five. It's not like we lost a lot. Uh, so, you know, really excited about the matchup. We'll go back to Zoom for this next one. Uh, David, you can ask your question. Hey, Coach. Uh, David Eckert, the Clarion Ledger. Um, if you'll indulge kind of a, a big picture question. Um, I know y'all recently got hooked up with like a, a team wide NIL deal that mm -hmm. sounds like it's a multi year thing. Um, how important is something like that when you're trying to build a program like you keep talking about? I think it's incredible. You know, the fact that our, our, our young ladies um, from who are walk on all the way to our star player has an NIL deal multiple. I think it, it it is where the game is going. And, uh, you know, I have no problem with them buying my dinner now uh, when we fellowship. <laughs> so they don't even have a um, – my players don't even have a limit on Secret Santa anymore. So uh, it's incredible to see them. I was, bro I was broke in college. You know, we, we had a limit, uh, but they don't. Uh, I think it's incredible. I think all players – that play this game deserve an opportunity to be compensated 
uh, fairly as long as it's legal. And I'm really glad that people got behind, uh, businesses have gotten behind our players and um, supported them, for sure. Great article today, by the way. You said when we, when we fellowship. T tell me, I mean, I have an idea of what that yeah. might mean, but maybe you could, could um, share what that means, and maybe there are some activities mm -hmm. your group does away from the basketball court that have been special or meaningful or brought the group yeah. together. Well, uh, something that we do that is unique, I think, is we, we do a community service project every month. So, you know, I know a lot of teams start the year off by doing it, but it's something, it is, it is core for our program. So we like to give and give back and engage in our community. So there hasn't been a month since our players stepped on campus that we had not done some type of community service project and been in the community. Another thing we do, I mean, our players love to spend time uh, with each other. Uh, I was out recruiting in July and uh, I got a call. They were all in, in my pool. So uh, we spend a lot of time with each other, whether I'm there or not. And uh, we, we really consider ourselves to be a family. It is our culture at Ole Miss and it's something that I take pride on. And, and, and you know, you all ask our players, like, what's been the difference? And our team's just rooted in love. Like, our players really love each other. And, and um, I've been coaching 18 years, 10 as a head coach, and I've never had a pro been a part of a team that has loved each other the way this group does. And it's really refreshing to see. Just to follow up, um, so we're in March, so I'm guessing you've done either five or six, mm -hmm. if you gathered in September, oh. October, mm -hmm. community service activities. Do you, could you take us through each one, please, yeah, really quickly? I, I can try to remember all. I mean, we just recently did More Than a Meal, which is a community service project um, where there are uh, people that are uh, looking for a meal, and it's a great um, it's a great program that is that uh, they have in Oxford. And so, what you do is you pay for the meal. So we paid for the meal, and uh, our players served the meal, and spent time with all of the people that came in, and uh, from young kids to we met an 80 year old uh, young lady. Uh, so that was pretty cool. We just did that. We've, we've also, um, I don't know if you all remember, we had a water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi. Well, our players went into their own pockets and um, we, we sent uh, a truck load of cases of water to Jackson State Women's Basketball Program. We didn't even put it out there. It was just something that our team wanted to do. So we, we do the things in the community that we don't always even have a camera with. Uh, in December, we adopted a family um, and provided clothes and toys and uh, for for a family. We did it in Thanksgiving. You know, we we start in the summer. Uh, uh, reading projects. I mean, we're all over the place. Our the, our community, we're we're the women's basketball team for the Oxford community, and and we we take pride in that and they have put their arms around us as a program. Uh, ben Parker, Carnival Sports, sports uh, Just talk about, obviously, if you guys were to beat Gonzaga, you'd be, fa you know, presumably facing a, you know, number one, you know, ranked Stanford team. Uh, just talk about how do you kind of, how do you, I would that'd be a very exciting opportunity, but how do you kind of keep your, your team focused in the present, on, on the here and now, and, and not looking ahead? Just how do you, as a coach, keep your players locked in mentally, on just one game at a time and not looking ahead to a bigger matchup like that? I just think our schedule has prepared us for that. You know, early in the year, we went on a five-game winning streak and our heads got a little bit big. And um, we had a game at home against a team that had some injuries and I think human nature set in and we thought that we would just win and we lost. Uh, and so, you know, that experience, I think, has prepared our team to just stay in the moment. And so we've really done that. Um, it's not really hard to do. I, we, we're not thinking about Stanford. We're thinking about Gonzaga. Um, 
soon as we found that out. I hadn't watched any film. I This is my first time actually getting my eyes on Stanford because they play Gonzaga. <laughs> so I watched their game uh, this morning, and that was my first time seeing Gonzaga all year. I'm sorry, I just struggle with the West Coast with the time difference. So uh, we, for, as far as we're concerned, we're focused on the Zags. Jim Allen, Spokesman Review, Spokane, Washington. Uh, talk about Angel and what she's meant to this program. How you, how you got her to Oxford? Yeah. Oh, man. She is, in fact, an angel. No pun intended to us. I mean, literally, she... Uh, angel... I saw Angel in the NCAA tournament put on a show against Arkansas and then uh, followed up. They beat Arkansas and then they played Missouri State. And uh, her coach, after the season ended up getting a job at Memphis. And uh, I called her coach and I said, listen, is this kid going with you? Like, what's the deal? Um, and she said, you know, I think she's ready for the big stage and an opportunity to spread her wings. And uh, I don't know if you know much about me, but I can recruit, so I just started recruiting. <laughs> um, and we got her here. She's been a joy to coach. Angel is an incredible human being. Uh, just very humble, very intelligent. Uh, people don't get to see that because they just see her on the court. Uh, she's a ball of fire, uh, but uh, she's just really an awesome teammate too. So she has really made my job easy because I've been able to push her and she's allowed me to do that. We'll finish with uh, just two more questions, both from Zoom. First, Michael, and then Gabriella. Michael Katz in the Daily Journal. Uh, yo, you and I both struggle with watching West Coast basketball <laughs> games. Uh, I would just like to put that out there. Even though we're Laker uh, fans, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we struggle with a lot of basketball <laughs> on the West Coast right now. Um, it, it, a lot's been made of, of Gonzaga's three-point shooting. I guess from, from your perspective, is it is it scheming up good looks? Do they have tough shot makers? Is it a bit of both? I guess what makes them good uh, at what they do? I just think their their offensive flow, you know, they, they do a great job of spreading the floor and getting it in the hands of um, their shooters. Um, and so I think that they take good shots as well. I think that that helps them. And so, you know, Cats, I feel like our percentage is not great, but I just want to go on record that we've made some threes here and there too. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a joke. But we really have, uh, I mean, versus Missouri, we, we made nine. So don't let the Rebs get hot. This will become a three-point shootout battle. Uh, that is not what we want. Uh, but that, I think that's what makes them special. You know, they just spread the floor. Lisa runs great stuff. You know, they're spearheaded by their point guard, who's just incredibly smart and runs the show for them and, and, and sets them up for success. So I think that's what allows them to get those shots off. All right, Gabriella, last question. Uh, hi, Coach. Gabriella Lewis with the next. Um, you're in an interesting position here where you've got these, you know, formidable older players and Angel and Maya Taylor, who this will be their last tournament, and yeah. then, you know, younger players like Madison Scott. Um, can you speak a little bit to, you know, what this potential last ride means, but then also the younger folks kind of taking on the reins and, and the leadership they're bringing? Yeah, you know, when building a roster in today's climate, you know, I think you have to have a healthy balance of both uh, youthfulness, because they don't know any better, they're just always excited and ready to go, and then obviously experience uh, is important because last year we didn't have any and it showed. Uh, we played a South Dakota team that just came in and was just phenomenally uh, experienced. I think they had four fifth-year seniors and had been to the tournament like three times. It was the first time, yesterday was the first time I watched that game, by the way, uh, because I wanted to show my team uh, what the, and give them kind of a feel like what it was like. But um, in the in the off season, it, that's why we went after Maya once she went into the portal. Maya has sat on the bench in the final four when she was redshirting, played in elite eight games. Um, 
out of the 11 players on our team, nine has had NCAA tournament experience. One is a freshman, and then one, uh, Rita, uh, it transferred from Pitt, and this will be her first dance. And so it is just a different feel for us um, being in this tournament. Last year I was just so excited taking everything in, and I've, I've, I, think, I think I've coached – I know as a head coach this will be my third, but I've been to Sweet 16. Actually, uh, we beat Gonzaga to go to the Sweet 16 when I was at Pitt. I got a lot of history with Gonzaga. Um, and as far as the future is concerned with Madison and, and, our, and Snuda and Ayana, you know, it's exciting for them. Um, this is not their first time, uh, but they're, they're waiting and, and learning and the leadership that Angel and Maya and those uh, give and show, um, they're just following their lead and doing their part. So this, is, this has been my most enjoyable year. Uh, at Ole Miss uh, with Team 48. It's just been an incredible experience with this group. They're so humble, um, and they're just great individuals. And, you know, not every coach gets to say that, and I'm just proud that I'm able to do that, say that. Thank you, Coach McPhee McEwen, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you.